we were looking at the energy equation so here we rewrite this again um, where we now look at uh, term by term so this is the uh, this is essentially the inertial term of enthalpy flux enthalpy flux right and uh, so the enthalpy is now of the mixture and so h is now written as sigma uh, yk hk where hk is now the specific enthalpy of species k which can in turn be written as the standard heat of formation of that species time plus the um, sensible enthalpy okay this is a specific sensible enthalpy of species k and temperature is an unknown that is sitting on top of this integral here as a upper bound uh, of course if you want to rewrite this equation in terms of uh, internal energy instead of enthalpy you could uh, derive this from noting that you can write this as ek plus pk divided by rho k uh, for this hk and proceed from there. Um, now let us look at the second term or this is the first term on the right hand side here which is uh, the, uh, the q vector which is the heat flux vector. So the heat flux vector is essentially coming from like um, from the sides of a particular point in this uh, in, the, in the domain and uh, the first contributor is the conductive heat flux uh, which is which is um, given by the Fourier law. So we are assuming a fluid that would uh, satisfy the Fourier um, heat conduction K is the um, thermal conductivity of the mixture okay. So uh, when you now have a mixture of lot of species we have to ask what is this uh, uh, K. So similar to the question that we asked about mu we, we have a similar question on K as well uh, this, is, this is basically transport properties of mixtures which is something that we will have to go back to kinetic theory or uh, molecular level uh, to, to deduce we will not do this now I will just put it out put out an expression in a website. Um, this is coming from the fact that you have a, a diffusive component of enthalpy flux in addition to the mixture averaged convection. Right, so this, this 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 takes care of the mixture average. Okay, so this 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 will actually convect the enthalpy of the mixture at the mixture average velocity. But in addition to that, the species is also taking with it enthalpy of itself at the diffusion velocity. This is what um, this represents, which was sort of left out uh, previously. So you have a negative sign here that will take care of the fact that if you now take it to the left hand side, that would add up on the actual enthalpy that is, that is taken uh, by the uh, species. This is uh, a, a, a term that is the counterpart of uh, the Soret effect that we saw in multi-component diffusion. Uh, this is called the Dufour effect as you can see you have the, the um, thermal diffusion coefficient dti divided by dij showing up where dij is the familiar binary diffusion coefficient. And we had noticed the diffusion, the thermal diffusion coefficient earlier as well in the Soret effect. Uh, there uh, we were looking at a, cons a temperature gradient contributing to a concentration gradient. Um, here it is the um, the uh, uh, molecular diffusion velocities disparity. The disparity between the molecular diffusion velocities is what is actually contributing to a heat flux. Okay, so it is the opposite of um, the, what the Soret effect describes but uh, by a similar process or at the molecular level again. QR is a general term that is being written out to take into account radiative heat flux all right uh, but you should now be able to expand this uh, taking into account things like shape factors and uh, emissivities versus absorptivities and all those things uh, for the surfaces as well as gases that are involved in a volumetric or surface manner and so on uh, with, a, with a t to the power 4 dependence uh, putting the Stefan's uh, law and all, all those things. Uh, so if you, if you want to bring, bring in radiation into account there, there we are. Q dot is an external uh, heat release rate this is a volumetric heat release rate these are this is this is actually having this uh, uh, units like watts per meter squared. So you are looking at actually a heat flux over here but this is more like a watts per meter cubed because we are looking at volumetric heat release that is within the domain. So this is typically coming from things like if you now have a uh, very complicated uh, a geometry of something like a, a, a electrical wire or let us say nuclear rods or something of that sort that is giving rise to heat that is outside of the fluid but you want to now keep that within your domain because it is too complicated for you to negotiate the fluid within these parts but you want to just kind of uh, say 
on a, vol, on, on a spatial distribution basis uh, the per unit volume heat release rate would be so and so if you want to just plug that in. This is not the chemical heat release rate okay. The chemistry is part of the fluid mechanics it is not external this is external okay. The chemistry is part of the fluid mechanics sitting here in the delta H F not K that is the standard heat of formation of species K. If you now take that into account and then add that up weighted by the individual mass fractions of species uh, each species then you now get the summation for the standard heats of formation that tells you how much heat is actually released by taking in the heats of formation of the reactants and releasing the heats of formation of the products all right. So that is that is already taken into account in the H it is embedded there uh, it is not external. This is coming from the fact that recall this equation is a thermal energy equation you could write out the total energy equation by writing an equation for the for conserv conserving the stagnation enthalpy right. The stagnation enthalpy would have the static enthalpy plus the velocity squared by 2 right and you how did you get this you now take a dot product of the momentum equation with the, the flow velocity which is flow means mixture mixture mass averaged velocity of the mixture then you get what is called as a mechanical energy equation you subtract the mechanical energy equation from the total energy equation to get the thermal energy equation. While you did that in that equation you had a body force per unit uh, mass term showing up all right and the body force got dotted with the mixture averaged velocity all right but each species is actually getting acted upon by the body for by a body force that could be unique to that particular species in the first place and secondly the work done by the body force is on the species velocity a species is trying to move at a particular velocity small vk vector okay and then you now have a body force that is acting on it and trying to do a work on this. So the work actually should be a dot product of the body force or acting on that species per unit mass okay that is essentially acceleration there okay uh, times the species velocity but we took a dot product of the mixture average velocity. So the species velocity is nothing but the mixtures average velocity plus the diffusion velocity and we subtracted only one part of it which is corresponding to the mixture average velocity but there is still another part that is remaining which is which is based on the diffusion velocity that is the reason why we are getting this okay and and then the, the this this uh, this term is a viscous dissipation and we write out the viscous dissipation over here which is again um, notice this this is this is again using the t uh, tensor index the Cartesian tensor index notation over here and uh, we are uh, applying the Einstein's summation rule okay or uh, rule of summation over repeated indices we are having two repeated indices here i and j both of them are repeating all right. So tau ij is actually nine terms so it is it's a, it's a, uh, uh, it's a second order tensor so it has actually nine components and uh, dou vi by uh, dou xj is going to be again a tensor okay so this is like a dot product of two tensors all right and so uh, essentially what it means is that you are now having nine products that are all getting added up together all right and so we run I in 3D uh, we, we run i going from 1 to 3 and j going from 1 to 3 and then we will add up all of that okay. Now how, how did we get this if you go back and look at your momentum equation you had a dou by dou xj of tau ij which gave you the ith component of moment of your shear, uh, shear force per unit volume okay so you had a De a, a spatial derivative of a, your, your shear stress and we were dotting that with ui or, or, or vi 
okay. So our work done um, by the shear stress should have been something like uh, Vi dou by dou x x j of tau i tau i j. That's what we should have had. That that is that is actually the uh, work done in the mechanical energy equation. Okay, here we would have actually had a term that is more like um, dou by dou dou by dou x j of tau i j v uh, dou by dou x i of tau i j v i. Okay, so here what we are doing is that that is in the total energy equation. So the total energy equation you now look for what is the full work that is done by the um, viscous stresses and then in the mechanical energy equation you now have a term that is dotted by the, 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 the shear force um, with, with the velocity right and then you subtract that this is what you would, you would get. You can actually show these things as an exercise and uh, uh, we, we, will, we will post these as exercises for you to show okay uh, while, while you are doing this course. And finally of course we now have this um, dp, dp by dt term that is coming primarily on the right hand side because you are working with a enthalpy conservation. If you were to work with an internal energy conservation you will now notice that you have a ek plus pk by rho k you can now plug that in uh, here you now have uh, h that is now summing over um, yk ek plus sigma yk pk by uh, rho k and then you can, you can now identify this term on the right hand side if you are now trying to uh, conserve internal energy instead of uh, uh, enthalpy uh, but effectively this is a term that is going to come up primarily because this is the pressure work term essentially okay there is pressure that is uh, acting on a flow that is moving and because the flow is moving uh, you, you, you now have a, uh, a gradient in pressure that is acted upon by velocity that is as if like you now have a pressure that pressure force that uh, the, the flow is up against and therefore you have a work that is done by that and this is typically something that comes up for compressible flows you do not have to worry about it in incompressible flows all right. So uh, this is the energy equation finally uh, finally we have to close the set of equations that we have had with this expression for wi which is in turn containing your temperature and the the concentrations all right because this wi showed up on the right hand side of the species conservation equation and and that was kind of like an unknown until we tried it tried to relate it to a a, a set of previously agreed unknowns the set of previously agreed unknowns was concentration this is a mole fraction of course what we enumerated first was the mass fraction yi but the moment you actually use the multi component diffusion equation that equation was on grad xi so we had to now start reckoning xi as our unknowns and therefore we have to have a set of equations that relate xi and yi that is readily available that is an algebraic uh, e e e equation set. So you will now have to reckon xi also as unknowns and show that uh, uh, the, uh, and see that it shows up here in, in this uh, expression. In addition to the temperature showing up at a couple of places and this is the ugliest place where it shows up okay and I would like to remind you of this this is uh, the, the, the temperature sitting in the denominator of a ratio which is taken um, uh, which, is, which is risen to, uh, to an exponent with a negative sign all right. So this is a highly uh, which is a, this is a high degree of nonlinearity here that simply means that as the temperature increases this term will actually increase in a highly nonlinear fashion that means it is not going to rise as rapidly for low temperatures but it is going to go boom with uh, a slight change in temperature beyond a point that depends on E okay higher the E greater this nonlinearity or the greater the sensitivity of, uh, 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 of the reaction rate to or, or the, the, the production rate in this case for uh, the, uh, of, of the ith species um, to temperature okay. So higher the E the, the greater the delay uh, in, 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 in temperature axis for this thing to go, go up 
but the moment it begins to go up it goes to very high values okay so that is the nonlinearity that this this brings in which makes it very difficult for this set of equations to be solved already we are beginning to look at a fairly ugly set of equations in terms of just being partial differential equations that are nonlinear not necessarily nonlinear primarily because of the convective term but there are all other kinds of nonlinearities that we are also beginning to look at in terms of what the multi component diffusion equation even the fixed law for part of it shows up for you uh, and then you see this nonlinearity here this is actually a product okay this pi is actually a product of a lot of unknowns over here all raised to coefficients that are not one okay any time you have a power other than one you have a nonlinear term and you now have products of those that is making it miserable and on top of it you now have a very very nonlinear term that, that is uh, sitting there. So this is a horrendous uh, problem as far as uh, combustion is concerned. So we, we, we with this we can actually complete the set of equations. So what, have, what, what all have we done uh, so far in this full set of conservation equations. Uh, well of course I think I, 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 missed, I, I just missed uh, one more equation of state. Uh, equation of state um, which is P equal to rho or U T times um, sigma k equals 1 to n uh, y k divided by w k this is pretty much the way uh, the, the mixture molecular weight is defined all right uh, the mixture molecular weight is primarily defined through what is called as Dalton's law of partial pressures right. How did you get the Dalton's law of partial pressures we know from basic definition of density that you simply have to add up the densities of the individual species to get the dense mixture density all right and then the Dalton's law of partial pressures is the one that says that if you want to get the pressure of the mixture it is a addition it is a summation of all the partial pressures. So that is that is essentially the way we can define the mixture mixture molecular weight okay or in other words we now say that the mixture will also have to obey the uh, perfect gas law just as well as the individual species and uh, if that were to be, if that were to be the case it is its molecular weight should be like this all right or in other words you are saying uh, 1 over the mixture molecular weight is equal to 1 over uh, sigma uh, k equals 1 to n y k divided by w k. That's how that's how we are. Uh, <coughs> that, that, that's how we are doing this. So, uh, why did we need this, these equations? Uh, right. So, what we have to look for is what are the unknowns, and then what are the corresponding. In some sense, all these equations are linked to each other. They are all simultaneous set of equations. You can't solve each of the, any of them independent of the other. Okay. Uh, so, so you you need the entire set and uh, still what we can think of is each of these equations is meant to be like an evolution equation for a one, one particular unknown it is an unfortunately that it also involves other unknowns for which we will go in search of other equations which in turn will be evolution equations for some specific unknowns in, in, our, in our mind okay. So uh, th this, is, this is easy for us to actually try to tag equations and unknowns together. Okay, so that we can enumerate them uh, together and make sure that we have the same number of unknowns as the number of equations ultimately okay. So uh, the equations the, the list, of, list of equations uh, the list of equations and unknowns. one the first thing that we have is uh, overall continuity equation right now this equation involves rho and vi where vi is the ith component of uh, the mixture the mass average velocity of the mixture okay 
this is not the species velocity this is the uh, or, or, or if you want to use a vector notation which is a little bit less confusing we could simply say v vector. That means you now are looking at three components in 3D for you to for you to have, but it's only one equation. It's, it's a it's a merciless equation. It just puts all the mass together regardless of which direction in which things are going, right? Therefore, three components of velocity and density all together will have to be uh, tackled in this equation. We would now reckon this as uh, something that's an evolution equation for rho, so that's one unknown. <coughs> Okay. We still have three more unknowns to account for so we, we continue to go in search of equations uh, so if you are now looking for a vector as an unknown uh, to be solved for you now look for a vector equation the momentum equation is a good equation for us uh, so um, three components of uh, mixed momentum. Um, conservation right this involves um, this this continues to involve rho which has already been enumerated not a problem this involves the v vector all right that is good so this we should, things, things, things could have been nice if, if it just stopped here but unfortunately it involves p. which means we will have to now go in search of one more equation at least for p okay and then we will find that uh, that involves t and then uh, we will find that that involves something else and so on right. So that, that, that is how our lives are okay we, we, we go in search of more and more goals and then they get you into other problems and, and, and so on so that is what um, that is how combustion is so lively. Uh, here what, what we would like to uh, keep is this equation is meant as an evolution equation for velocity the mixture velocity so this is actually three uh, three unknowns right so all I am asking you to do here is match the number on the left corner to the to, to the right corner we should try to look for that so long as we keep going doing this we should we should hope that finally we will have um, the same number of unknowns as the number of equations okay. So we still have one more unknown that we have to write an equation for and uh, let us suppose that we can pick uh, the energy equation the energy equation does contain P although it is not really an evolution equation for P okay we will now see that it involves other unknowns so one energy equation. Now this involves a lot of new unknowns right so it involves rho which has already been it is on a, it's on a new unknown it is an old unknown um, it involves um, V vector all right that was sitting in the capital D by DT okay uh, in fact the way we can actually find out unknowns is uh, to do it like, like the way you would do uh, if you are a computer so you just scan it is like rho is it an unknown yes it is unknown d that is not an unknown h is it an unknown h is equal to y k that is unknown 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 k times k okay, is n times and then you keep doing this and then you will find the t's and so you can, you can just very blindly you do not have to be a genius okay so it is not a very difficult thing to do at all uh, just have to be very patient plodding through equations term by term letter by letter okay. And, and then you, you, you can find that V, v shows up there and uh, um, <coughs> and uh, yeah we, we did that right so we now we now go from here we now go from here we go, we go there oh, yk is an unknown okay unfortunate now for the first time that is n unknowns for you okay that is that is capital N unknowns and capital N could be 40, 50, 100. Okay, so that that is one of the nightmares that, that, that is now beginning to show up um, but, but anyway we are now looking at only one equation okay, which is supposed to uh, be like a template equation for an evolution of something as we now go hey, hk this is fine that is given t sitting there 
is, is an unknown and that is what we would now do, we would now like to tag this equation as an evolution equation for. So uh, we, we have T uh, 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 enumerated as an unknown already now and then uh, what else is going on. So you now have Q, Q has this K that is supposed to be given um, well strictly speaking it depends on the mixture fraction so it is an unknown but we now have to write equations for that relationship between the, the, the K and the mixture fraction okay. So uh, you, you can always look at a lot, lot of things as unknowns and then, and then provide equations for each of those okay uh, but, but uh, let, let us not do that at, the, at this time. Uh, T uh, is, is counted um, HK contains uh, T that is counted YK is counted VK okay that is a pain. Why is it a pain? It is n diffusion velocity vectors that means this is actually 3 n unknowns in 3D for 3 components of each and every species diffusion velocity vector right. So that is a lot of unknowns <laughs> just, just proliferating by the minute uh, with the energy equation it looks like a big villain here. Um, so we, we, we had this, this this is okay so we have already counted all these things we are, we are doing fine um, um, and then we go back here fk is supposed to be known p is already counted uh, uh, phi involves essentially the, the mixture average velocity that has been counted <sighs> good okay. So what are we what have we come across um, over here it, which it, it is uh, we will now look at this as a, uh, a evolution equation for T which is uh, one unknown but we are grossly underestimating the problem here because we have now to reckon 3 unknowns here and sorry 3 n unknowns here and 1 n unknowns here right. So we are short of 4 n equations. The good news is any time you are uh, short of a equation for a vector you look for a vector equation because the vector equation will give you 3 components by itself alright yes pressure is also there yes P is also there uh, fortunately for us that is being counted okay so that is not an extra unknown anymore thank you. So we now are now hunting for um, uh, four n equations. Okay, so what is the first equation that we can think about? Um, that there is like a set of n equations. That's the species conservation equations, right? So the species conservation equations are n species conservation equations. and species conservation equations and what do the species conservation equations contain they contain um, your yk right so we had a dou v dou yk by dou t as the first term unsteady term then we had a convective term which involved the um, mass average velocity of the mixture v vector small v vector then we had the diffusion velocities of species so right we had this right and then we had uh, we had let us say uh, wk you either write wk here and then count this n equations separately or you now say well I can write plug this expression on the right hand side of that and and, and note that it has these x and t and so on so I do not have to write separately this expression it is just one term one huge term that, that can be plugged on the right hand side of that equation without uh, having to count it separately. So let us suppose that this is what we have now I would like to uh, look at this equation as an evolution equation for yk that is n unknowns I want to <coughs> basically say this n corresponds to an n there so just for the just for the purpose of tallying okay every step of the way okay what have we not still done we do not know what is <coughs> this 
okay is it all not quite if you were to plug this if you are to plug this in you now have a xk or or or, or an xj that is not the same as y, yk unless all the molecular weights are assumed to be the same which is not necessarily the case in general right. So we also have to now reckon the the mole fractions of individual species as unknowns all right okay. So we are now still stuck with chasing 4n unknowns okay fortunately for us when you are now looking for a, 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 a evolution equation for this this is a vector and we can now look for a vector equation so 3n multi component diffusion equations right in 3D of course right. So this involves uh, this involves yk all right xk all right uh, capital VK all right um, and then uh, we also had P T things all, all those things that have been counted so far right. So what it basically does for you uh, unless I am missing something more uh, to just point out if you, if, you, if you have the equation right in front of you you can go back to see if uh, anything more is uh, involved in here a small fk vector is supposed to be given it is not it is not considered an unknown um, and similarly other parameters like uh, dij and dti and so on are, are considered to be given uh, okay. So here I would like to look at this equation as a uh, evolution equation for um, it is not really an evolution it is not it is not evolving things but it is basically a constitutive relationship for uh, capital VK vector that that gives you 3n unknowns 3n unknowns so you have a 3n here and a 3n there that is okay but what are we still missing we are we are still have to count xk right as n unknowns therefore there must be one set of n equations n relationships between yk and xk uh, involving all the molecular weights okay did we did we uh, close the set maybe not did just just go back we, we have uh, taken care of rho we have uh, taken care of uh, v we have taken care of t we still have to worry about p we started out with thinking that we will go through the energy equation in search of p but we tagged it to t so we have one uh, equation of state equation of state uh, this is uh, this is this involves uh, this involves p rho t and uh, go back here it involves yk now everything is everything in this in this uh, is now counted okay so this is uh, this this I would like to look at an, as an equation for P so one unknown one unknown so how many what is what is the full set of equations that we have to solve how many unknowns are we having. Let us look at what we do not know first uh, we do not know a lot of things right so the easiest thing is to look at the unknowns so you now say we have a uh, 1 plus 3 4 plus 1 5 uh, plus n 5 plus n <laughs> okay 5 plus uh, n plus 3 n that is 5 plus 4 n um, so this is this is now uh, for x k this is n unknowns. So we were counting uh, 5 plus 
uh, 5 plus n over here and, and then now you say 5 plus 4 n okay and then this is 5 plus 5 n this is 6 plus 5 n. So we are essentially looking at a total set of 5 n plus 6 unknowns and uh, we have 5 n plus 6 equations to solve for okay. This is a question that was asked for me in my PhD qualifying exam okay. What is the total number of equations and unknowns um, yeah, in combustion okay and uh, list them. That means we have to list both the equations and uh, the unknowns okay. So you just have to mark this up 5n plus 6 <laughs> that is like a magic answer hmm? and then start scratching it um, and so on start, start counting thinking okay. But this is a clear this is actually a decent way to think about this like each and every equation is supposed to do the job of solving for you an unknown okay but it involves other equation other unknowns that we will now go in search of for with, with, with for other equations okay and then we have to now close the set this is essentially the idea over here 5n plus 6 what does that mean even if you took a modest number for n as like 20 you are in trouble we are now looking at 106 equations and unknowns that we need to solve for and these are ugly looking equations okay. If you were to take a more realistic situation of 40 species <laughs> okay you are now looking at 206 equations you, you see you see the problem right. So there are people who do these things it is as if like uh, I am not making this up. Okay, so you look at the pages of things like combustion and flame or proceedings of the combustion institute or combustion science and technology, combustion theory and modeling any of these things you will find people who are actually doing these kinds of things. So it, it, it is not uh, it is not just to boast that, that we have lot, a lot set it is something like a burden that we have to go through. <coughs> Then we have to think about is it is it required for you to actually keep cranking these numbers um, all the time for each and every term in each of these equations because you have like a large number of equations and so on. There are many ways by which you can handle these things like for example if you now are thinking about a typical equation keep in mind we have a convective term we have a diffusion term and a, a and a reaction term right. So these these three terms have their own typical time scales that means you do not have to necessarily evaluate each of these terms in each and every equation all the time that means you are just cranking up numbers right. The idea is the reaction time scales are typically very very small things are happening pretty fast you are looking at fast chemical reactions in the reaction zone right. So when you now have fast reactions that are happening the time scales for these reactions is so short that the flow is hardly moving when you are now trying to evolve how the composition is changing because of the chemical reactions. So for all you care you could actually freeze the flow okay and advance it over a large time step and during this time you can now do your chemical calculations alone. You do not have to worry about the flow field it is like frozen right. So that means you go back to an expression that looks like this and then say this is dci over dt like an ODE all right at a, at a particular place and then you now are given a concentration set of uh, for, for, for all the species at that particular point. If I now take a small time step here how will I advance to the next small small time little later to change the concentrations based on a just a time integration of this set of equations okay given that the temperature is whatever it is right there 
all right and then keep doing this for quite some time until the composition has significantly changed and then start moving this around mixing it with, with other uh, places and uh, convecting it and so on then you, you now bring in the other parts of your uh, the other terms of your equations. So this is like a multi time scale approach that allows you to uh, uh, what should I say uh, reduce the amount of calculation that is required you see. So you can now look at this like a separate package that will that will keep on cranking uh, before you actually crank the fluid mechanics right. So that means you, do, you do not have to worry about taking small time scales to resolve this and the fluid mechanics simultaneously the fluid the, the, the fluid is not going to take the species too far from where they are as they are changing because of chemical reactions so you can freeze the flow during this time. So you can take these kinds of approaches um, to simplify your uh, life but life is certainly complicated if you now look at the full combustion problem um, what I would uh, what we would do from now on now on is we, we now have actually looked at the full combustion problem we have posed the combustion problem okay for any situation. This, this set of equations is now valid for any situation of combustion problems. What we will try to do is, is it possible for us to simplify this under certain conditions. So we will now, we have now reached like a summit and then we will keep going downhill to make it easier for, easier for our lives and, and then we will now start looking at specific problems like let us say a premix flame or a diffusion flame and so on within a simplified framework that is handleable uh, from a theoretical point of view rather than having to rush to a computer every time to do anything right. So this is this is the way the rest of the course is going to go from here this is like the starting point from here we will now go uh, simplifying things.